So let, telling us about your uh, your filmmaking producer is reported also, right? Yeah, so I'm, um, I guess, first and foremost a filmmaker, but I started for about uh, 10 years um, as a journalist, as a video journalist. So I was working for in Australia for a show um, called Sunday Night, which was basically CBS 60 Minutes, and I'd travel around the world and I'd have my camera, and I learned the art of having to film my own stories, and I really was chasing guerrilla um topics where it was difficult for a normal crew and a normal reporter to get into. Uh, and I, I sort of reached the pinnacle of that and then wanted to explore my own um, documentaries and, and TV topics that I wanted to do. And one of those was on manhood. So I set about creating my own rite of passage where I went to 12 different countries mm. and put myself through 12 different initiations to try and man up and match it with some of the world's toughest men. Because I'd seen, I'd been uh, privileged enough to travel to some of the most remote places on earth with this TV show. And I'd seen a lot of cultures uh, and traditions that were not going to be around in 10 years' time. Uh, and a lot of those had these rituals of manhood um, that, again, were about to be lost. And I just felt like, I felt so privileged to have seen uh, a lot of these cultures that maybe my children wouldn't see. And I just felt this instant urge to document it, um, but not just document it, but put myself in the picture and um, put myself through the initiations themselves. Um, when did they start the fascination of that idea for that show? Um, well, ever since I was a kid, I think I probably never quite felt uh, man enough anyway. I, my mum and my dad uh, split up when I was young and I was raised mostly by my mum. So I had this void of trying to figure out, you know, what it means to be a man when I was mm. a kid, you know, because how do you, when you, when you don't really have the software around you to download, um, how do you hold a beer? How do you walk? How do you talk? How do you hold yourself? Um, it's not something that's easily gotten. And I think when I got into journalism, I tried to, you know, shave my head and do <laughs> undercover stuff and try to <laughs> test myself in the world of film. And it turns out, you know, my dad was a, an executive producer of a TV show in Australia and maybe I was trying to um, impress him. So I had this void ever since I was young to try to man up. Uh, so for me, leaving to do this series was, I don't know, it was just something I felt like I needed to do. Oh, interesting. So you maybe had an experience in the past, right? Yeah. And I think, you know, experiences in the past are, are what defines all of us. If you look at anybody and what they end up chasing, it always comes, comes back to childhood and what they felt like they missed or had the greatest void. Because in life, you only search for what, what you feel like you've missed or you're missing. Um, and if you look hard enough, I find it absolutely fascinating about just how much your childhood impacts uh, each and every one of us. Uh, in the Western world, rites of passage um, for men and boys, I mean, they're so important, but they're virtually non-existent um, in our way of life. I mean, it might be going and getting your driver's license or going out and drinking for the first time, or it could be going on that gap year and going away overseas and then coming back. But the problem is there's no real ceremony that surrounds you when you come back to acknowledge, hey, you've done this and you're a man. Mm. And in these uh, different cultures around the world, it's, it's, it always fascinates me because it's not like they all came together and decided, you know, these tribal cultures around the world, they didn't come together at a convention and say, well, this is how you turn a boy into a man. Mm -hmm. um, they, they all worked it out independently that what you need to do, it's almost like you need to kill the boy to become a man. And they take the, it all usually involves a, a similar process. They, they grab the boys, they separate them from their parents, they put them into a, a men's hut where they teach them how to be capable, how to protect, how to provide, how to survive, how to treat a woman, how to be with a woman. All these things that you can be taught uh, and then they emerge and they always have this really fearsome task at the end that they, they're so frightened of as a kid. And then they have to combat that and overcome the fear. And then you, you go through these initiations. And for me, it was, you know, I did it 12 times over. So it might have been wrestling a bull or going down headfirst into a snake's lair and grabbing a snake for, to, for food for the tribe. Or it might be taming a bucking bronco or something like that. And every time, without doubt, it was so incredibly frightening leading up to that point but then you overcome it 
and the feeling you get from the tribe who accept you and then often give you, you a new name and you get reborn, you can't help but have like a physical, mental, emotional shift. And it's really, you can't help but feel proud of yourself. How you conquer your fear when you go into a situation like that, like the snake, like maybe you have a, a phobia for the snakes or something like that, if you have that, how you can conquer that fear? Conquering fear is the basis of this whole show for me. Um, this whole experience was all about uh, overcoming fear. And I think we get bred as a kid to believe that challenge and obstacles are negative. But we're never taught that that's the only way that you can grow as a human being and as a person. It's only when you fail or you come up and you conquer your fears, whatever they may be. And it can be in the office, it can be in your day job, or it can be as extreme as going and jumping on the back of a bull. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, if it's, it's always the lead up to a particular um, point in time that you that you fear or an, uh, th something that you're about to go do um, that is worse than the actual event um, of doing it. So, I mean, it, you could say that, you know, before walking in to be live on radio or um, or, or recording, or me meeting you guys, if, if you're nervous and you feel that anticipation, it's always going to be worse yeah. than actually the event of doing it and, and pushing through that. And when you do, the feeling is irreplaceable. Like it's, you can't beat that. And I think that's what this series was about for me. It was mostly about confronting my fears uh, and having the courage to find uh, out parts of myself and conquer parts of myself that I didn't ever thought I could. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I'd encourage everybody <laughs> um, to look at life differently and try to embrace challenge okay, that's uh, true. in every sense. Because, you know, if you're scared to go and um, take a punt to get a, get a new show or, or strive to go and um, uh, conquer uh, something that you've never, you never thought you could do, uh, you'll always, even if you perceive that you failed, you'll always come up trumps the other end because you will have learnt from the experience and you'll know your limitations. Yeah. Usually how long do you stay for each location? How long do you stay? A week? A couple of days? Or Sometimes it was six weeks. Six weeks? Um, which was, was quite intense. Uh, only because we had to, a lot of the time, search for the locations uh, on the ground when we got there. Because these are places that you can't find on a map. They don't exist on Google. Oh, okay. There's no pictures normally of where we're going and there's no way to research what you're going to find. So we'd have like a wish list of things that we w wanted to explore within a certain culture. But you re never really know what's awaiting you until you get there and you start filming these initiations. And, and that was the beauty of it because I, once I relaxed and went... <laughs> You know, everything's going to go wrong and anything can happen. Rite of Passage premieres Thursday, June 8th at 9 p.m. on El Rey Network.